Heard around the world on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast. It's Cannabis Talk 101 with Blue and Joe Grande. Hello and welcome to Cannabis Talk 101, the world's number one source for everything cannabis. My name's Blue. Alongside me is the world famous Joe Grande. Well, thank you, Mr. Christopher <laughs> Wright. And thank you guys all for listening to our podcast, Cannabis Talk 101. All around the world, make sure you check out our website cannabis talk 101.com as we are the world's number one source for everything cannabis yes we got so many great articles and blogs on the website to check out and so many great reads there or call us up anytime and say hello 1-800-420-1980 check out the ig pages at cannabis talk 101 blue is at the number one christopher Wright. hello and i am at joe grande 52 and i gotta remind you guys about together you know we could all do it together right so together we can check out the hashtag together we can at Canna Devices, C A N N A D E V I C E S. Now I'm real excited, you guys. Not only am I excited, of course, for the Burning Trees Festival going down in Adelanto Blue, but yes. I'm real excited because the guest we have on the show is going to be rocking that stage. And this guest, folks, you've heard me talk my shit about <laughs> the Bay and how where I'm fucking from and with all this shit y'all heard me say. Uh, now, I say I get a lot of my spit from possibly two cats that really have laced the game up for me, and I give homage where homage is respected. And this man, Todd, is one of them. Hello. And Earl's the next. Yeah. And if you don't know, do your fucking history, folks, because today we got royalty at the Cannabis Talk 101 campus. Legend. And this right here is real walkie-talkie spit that's coming out of my mouth right now. Hip-hop icon, <laughs> motherfucking <laughs> too short, an Oakland-based legend with a career spanning over 37 motherfucking years, what? and if not longer, because you know he was spitting before that, with classic albums from albums since the mid-'80s, folks. Where short I bought the album, the, the tape off you at the Barry S. Flea Market out the trunk is. is where I got your first tape at. And that where no, I couldn't wait to tell you that as I cut my intro off right there and, and my intro to go. I first bought that tape off you in the 80s at the Barry S. Flea Market when you were slanging them out your trunk. Damn right. That being said, folks, that's how my hip hop history goes back from purchasing them directly from him, working with rap legends such as, I don't know if you ever heard of a dude by the name of Jay-Z, yeah. Eazy e Notorious B.I.G. Yeah. Well, he's been a staple in the West Coast hip-hop since the debut of his album, Don't Stop Rapping, folks, and he's been rapping ever since. He's also widely <laughs> known for being a hip-hop supergroup legend with who? The rap. The, when this came out, I lost it. Mount Rushmore? I was like, really? Westmore. E Westmore. West Mount Westmore, excuse West Coast. Me. Excuse West, me, West, my bad. West, Mount West. Westmore with E-40, Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg, and right here, E-40. Their album, Bad MFs, released July 7th and has been knocking in people's trunks ever since it came out. When I first heard it, too, I was like, ooh, it took me back. Like, I got me some JBLs in the trunk <laughs> and a sunk young because I couldn't afford a Zeus. <laughs> and if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the zap boy. You know, zap. exactly. Zap. And it give me a nice little knockoff EQ so I could turn it up a little bit and throw <laughs> the mids in there. Mm. And you guys, when you hear this shit, it just takes you to that. Make sure you catch Too Short, like I said, at the upcoming Burning Trees Festival, Saturday, August 27th. Fun and show. Adelanto, he'll be performing live there with us, you guys. And it's a pleasure because, like I said, we go back so much, Short, and we've never sat down like this. And we've crossed paths. We've seen each other from the shows I've done in the Bay Area but never sat across from each other on a mic, which is fucking weird to me in a weird, crazy way because, I've, I've, like I said, I've never got to tell you to your face, Doug, I bought a tape off you back in the day. And I used to rap your shit on the radio in the morning <laughs> like Damn. crazy on the doghouse. Fucking right. Well, let's, let's give this so man So give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for motherfucking Too Short. Man. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and when I think of you, Doug, I remember watching the early shit on, on that Saturday morning TV with that, that lady that had you on. And I was like, who's this young cat out of Oak and Spitting? Like, that was probably your first TV interview. Yeah, that was one of the first. That was, um, <clears throat> what was the name of that show? With uh, Dominique. 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 Dupree. What was Dominique Dupree. Yeah. Dupree. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. What, was, what was the name of the show? Home Turf. Home Turf. <laughs> yeah, that, that was one of my first little uh, appearances. I, I did something on uh, the local news. You know what I'm saying? I, I was, right. I, was, I had no... Channel 2? I think it was Channel 4. four? But I, okay. I, I had no music 
professionally released, but I was pretty damn famous. He was yeah. already bubbling, yeah. already bubbling. And, and that's what I'm saying. That's when I first caught wind of you watching that show with Dominic. Exactly. And then I got your tape out the Barry S. the flea market because I was like, this motherfucker's really working the streets. Hell yeah. yeah. And that's where I see your hustle where I'm like, cats don't really realize, realize. I mean, they see Too Short and they just pay for a concert. Like thinking, oh, this motherfucker must have always been doing it. Now, well, you know, as a youngster, um, I really out hustled a lot of competition. Yeah. Like, I was... um pretty much the first to do it i had a rap partner in the early days named freddie b and when me and freddie b were selling tapes around the bay there was nobody else and you said that in a rap me and freddie b selling tapes yeah. the trap. yeah, yeah. it, was, it was just us so if, if freddie b was to say he is one of the um originators of bay area hip-hop he's telling the truth big and, and he's a preacher now so praise the lord he's still spitting that game exactly yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> well they ain't easy <laughs> yeah so you know um even though we were the first, we still had a, 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 you know, a work ethic that was, you know, relentless, man. It was daily. Like, we, we really put a lot of tapes out. And back in the day, you know, technology, it was easy to duplicate a cassette. I'm about to say, so, I think I bought my first one from RBX, a, a bootleg. So, yeah, so <laughs> you could buy it from me, but then we probably had 10 other bootlegs. Oh, I gave uh, it out. The, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, you burnt it. You just copied it. You, we, we, in hip hop, you kind of program to hate the bootleggers, but I always love them. They like their promotion, free, free, free marketing. Yeah, yeah. Well, so. yeah, when you're thinking about it on a money scale, it hurts. But when you think about it on a bigger scale, your mind's expanded. Even on a money scale, um, the artists over the years who get bootlegged the most make are the, the most. most pop that's the most pop most popular artists. Yeah, they make the most money. Period. So. You know, the, the so either way, it, it works in, in every artist's favor. Yeah, it, and nobody wants to bootleg if your shit ain't hot. <laughs> shit. I mean, there's those facts right there, too, right? Why are they doing True it? story. Exactly. Yeah, they're so, not going to fucking go push so it out to everybody. It, to me, it's always been a compliment. I never wanted to walk up to a bootleg and say, knock it over, knock over the box and say, you ain't selling my shit. I'm like, get it all out there, man. Get, yeah, keep it going. Give it to the world. Hell yeah. And you've been rapping forever. The first dude to come out there, everybody knows it's bitch. Yes. And it's like, it's just so crazy to think when you did that back then as we look at this young artist going, and everybody going, what the fuck? But you was just doing it in the neighborhood, in the town? Is that how? Because I didn't know you from if you were on the blocks like so that. In the, in the Bay Area, and I'm, I'm going to say Oakland in particular, uh, even if you're not a recording artist, even if you're not a pimp, if you're not even a street cat at all, you still got to know how to spit that game. Every yeah. I don't care if you... Uh, a schoolboy who went to college on an academic scholarship, you from that area, you still know how to spit that game. So um, when I took to rapping, I really didn't have direction at first. I was just like mimicking what I heard from New York. And then I heard this song um, from Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, The Message. Mm -hmm. The Message still plays to this day. It's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's a classic. And in, the, in that song, they were giving you you know, a raw depiction of New York life. And at that moment, I decided that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to just give you a visual and a, and, and just, you know, Too Short was going to be Oakland. And that's what it is. It's and just, when I'm yeah. talking about East 14th, I'm talking about Flint's, I'm talking about whatever, this is right here on the town. And if you want to represent Oakland, you got to spit that game. So that has been my formula from day one is to just spit it, man. And it's great because it's worked and everybody knows about the town now and they call it the town and it's been like this global thing where it's like, fuck, it works. The game is timeless and you have all these images that have came and went in hip-hop, but spitting that game, that's what me and E-40 do. And that style doesn't go away, so we, we never really, um, you know, the, the, the music doesn't age as other things would, other types of music. With, that may be attached to a dance or a fashion statement or a certain hairdo or something, you know what I mean, a look. As you mentioned, you and 40, and so did I, because, you know I mean, I, I look at it that way, too. And mm -hmm. I want you to tell me, because I have no fucking clue of this story, how did you and 40 first meet? How did the two fucking guys who are the icons of the Bay take me to the day that we slapped hands on day one? Well, you know... Uh, Rapping Forte was around. Oh, yes. Early on. Uh, Mac Dre was around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. E-40 and the Click was around. You know, um... RBL the, across the way. The early RBL. way. I'm talking about the early... Oh, yeah. I'm talking about before the Spice Ones and be, before yeah. the 90s came along. Like, these guys were around. Right. And 
the streets, the real streets, people in the streets that do street things, it's always been connected to the rappers. And E-40 just happened to be from a group of guys who were affiliated with my guys. His guys in Vallejo were friends and associates with my guys in Oakland. So we were around each other and not even having anything to do with music. We just were around each other. I knew D-Shot, his brother. Yeah, right? D-Shot. Shout out to D-Shot. I knew D-Shot. Be Legit. I knew them. Before we even became hip-hop camaraderies, we were like dudes who knew each other. Just singing and, and kicking. And it wasn't really, the, the rap music wasn't really weighing heavy on those relationships. It was just like, that's a dude I respect. That's a dude who's out here hustling, getting his. We just happened to make music, but... You know, it wasn't really that, that. It didn't mean, oh, you rap? I rap, too. It was, right, it was, right, right, right. It wasn't like that. It yeah. was just like, what's up, homie? I knew who E-40 was. So somewhere down the line, we started, you know, really, like, linking up on the music thing. And then at, uh, the radio station, because you come from radio, is the reason why we started making records. What Be- station? Because what? of uh, KML, KML Summer Jam. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And KML uh, tried to kick up this little controversial uh issue between me and E-40 that was it was a, a really false narrative and they were trying to say that I did, <coughs> I did some uh, some hater shit to 40 and they tried to instigate it and basically on air yeah on the air they tried yeah, to not, not, this on. is early they, on too this is the uh, the it's, morning it's, zoo it's like mid 90s yeah, exactly okay. and they tried to pretend that Too Short called the radio station talking shit about E-40 and it was somebody mimicking my voice and um 40 called me on the phone right after that, that morning. He called me in the morning. He was like, man, was you on the radio this morning? I said, no. Nah. He said, you wasn't on the radio. I said, no. Nah. He's like, tell me right now, you wasn't on the radio. I was like, no. Nah. He said, all right, talk to you later. And then, You had no idea what he's talking about. You're like, what are you right, talking yeah. about? Still didn't so, even know, yeah. So we chop it up later. All the story comes out that they tried to, you know, fabricate this shit. And 40 was like, you know, man, they're trying to start some shit between us. And basically, we just came up with the, the idea that a radio station is trying to instigate a war between us. Instead of letting them win, we should just get in the studio and make music together. So they motivated what? the wow. first song we made, which was um, Rapper's Ball. Nice. It was a big hit record. You uh, got it on. Yeah. Yeah. The, that the was album cute. he had it on went platinum. Oh, hell yeah. That was an anthem. And we made probably, shit, 100 songs since then. Probably more, <laughs> m- more than that, really. So they actually made you guys come together. I, I mean, you what know. What a crazy story. I had no idea. It came out. If that was probably with the, the morning show, the crazy morning show, the white dude in the it morning. It was coming from the program yeah, director. Her name, her name was Michelle. Oh, right. Yeah, she was. She was, she was she, out there. She was good at her job, but she had, like, a bad reputation with, like, PR. Yeah. Well, she'd start to... funk up. I mean, but then you got to thank her, too. Oh, you started. That's funny how that started with your guys' shit. I was like, she should have let me knock that down back in the day. <laughs> it would have been a better Did you a, not a rap about story. her at one point, if I'm not mistaken? Did I hear something about a girl named Michelle from the radio station in one of your raps? No. I, no, I, I, I rapped about the actual radio station. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said, came me up and kissed my yes, ass. Yeah, I remember hearing some shit. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, um. I just told the truth in the song. Like, I was like, everybody was running these false narratives. And I was like, I just ran the truth. And it was like, you know, they. I think that at that point, they really thought they were, like, ending my career. Because yeah, they, they literally sent around, like, old school fax machine letters with um, wow. saying, uh, do not support Too Short as an artist anymore. It was a whole campaign. Wow. And the next thing I did, I, um, I released uh, the song, Getting It. And that all, was it. All that shit went away. Uh, out of Sway, good. Sway was at the station still back then. Uh huh. Sway went to mornings then by that that time. Yeah, and Sway was like, "We're not going any further with this." We had um, it was some issues with the Loonies, with Camiel, with me, and he called everybody to the table, and we just sat there live on the morning show and squashed that shit. And that was the end of that. Hey, he's nice. always been a real one. In my book, Jonathan yeah. is the man. That guy is the mayor. Yes, Always has been he till this day. He is. No, he's the mayor, dog. I called when I was in New York last uh, time. When I was in D.C., I checked in with him like, I'm in D.C. You, where you at? He's like, that's too far for me, Joe. But he's a good dude because he, he makes shit right. I've always loved Sway for that. Yep, he called that shot, man, and it's been an old story ever since. Short, who's the, who's the, the yeah, I mean, you know, you've worked with so many iconic, you know, legends in the game mm-hmm. and, and, and yourself as well, but... You know, who's that one artist that you like working with? Like, you know what I mean? I mean, I know you like them all, but... There's like, a lot, man. Like, I, I did a lot of good work with Ice Cube. A lot of, you know, 40 got to be, like, top of the list as far as collaborations. Uh, Scarface is a really good friend of mine Ooh. who I work with a lot. Uh, Pimp C, rest in peace. 
was another one of my good friends who we got the studio a lot, made a lot of good music. Uh, Eric Sermon. Yeah. You know, like you I, I chill. those are like my guys who I've made, you know, repeated songs with and, and it's a I lot just of say good those, I think fuck fate. I just you just took me to a fucking club in every just a different city right now too, as you said that shit, because you made anthems that just knock club after club. As you went artist, you just took me to different cities and fucking strip clubs. But you know, a lot of rappers are really good. They're good artists. They perform good, they record good, they write great songs, but you have these other rappers who are actually just like musicians. They like, when they're in the studio, you know, the Pimp C, Scarface, when they're in the studio, they're like, you know, commanding what's gonna get played by the guitar player, what are the, who, they program the drums, they're like on the knobs, <laughs> yeah. doing like Technical. this. And, you know, I'm a music guy, people don't really know that, but I made a lot of two short songs, like from top to bottom, I made the beat, you know. Did you do? No, that was um. That, you talking about getting it or I'm a player? I don't know which one. Because they, they, they both they both sound similar. They both sound exactly. I was just doing the beat. Play. I'm I think I was one. I it's think I made up my mind when I was yeah, 17. I was yeah. I'm a player. That's I it. made Freaky Tales, Cuss oh, Line, wow. did Dolphin you? B. Hold on, you did you that? You produced that too? Dun, dun, that's, yeah, that's me playing the music. Dun, dun, dun. No. But I, I, I was saying, like, I like to get in the studio oh, with wow. other rappers who are music guys. Yeah. And that's, those are guys like Eric Sermon. You know, some, you know, these dudes are rappers, but they're also producers. Right. You know, a guy like Scarface, you don't know, but he made a lot of his own beats. Right. A lot. Like, in Scarface, was. He plays guitars and gets on keyboards and PMC was He's the same producers. way. Producers, yeah, they make yeah. they make tracks. Do you, do you do you write all your songs? I have written probably ninety percent of two short lyrics, but over the years, I always um, I think I have a certain like style, right? And I always have like young rappers around me and stuff. And even from 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 the early days when I was selling a bunch of platinum albums, I would tell like one of the homies, I was like, I'm gonna let somebody write me a song on every album, and yeah. whoever writes that song probably up front you might get. Ten, fifteen thousand dollars, and later down the line, you probably get who knows how much more just for writing a song for too short. So I would like, I would like, don't try to write like me, write the way you write, and then I wanna, I wanna come with like a different style. So there's a few songs in there that um that I didn't write, and I used to hang with like people like MC Breed, yeah, and MC Breed was like just he was hip hop. Oh top, my God! I put top Breed bottom. on the chrome, shine it up good. So Kept Breed, the Breed yeah. Yeah. he was such a writer and a freestyle and all that. He would always be like, "Hey, short, say these words, say this, say this, say this," and he'd give me all these like little slick lines to say. But you to know, me, he was one of the slick ones like that because I mean, yeah. you see the things the, the, he said. The wordplay, he was he was Tupac quality for real. I yeah. agree. T Tupac loved MC Breed, but um, did you ever get a record with Pac? Yeah, well, we, me and Pac did a couple songs together. We yeah. did. He was he was on my album uh, Cocktails. Ah, yes. And I did some stuff with him on the Ant Banks album. I don't know what else, but, you know, we just worked, man. Yeah. And <clears throat> I don't know, um, you know, those those, uh, those 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 young artists need, sometimes they need an outlet, man. And like, just to say, I wrote that song for Too Short. It's cool. So I don't need anybody to write me a song, but I do it for, to help out economically, to give you a little boost, give you some, uh, some credit. I can feel and, that from and, you. To, and to give me... A little, little different style. So, and not only that, and you get to give that internal pat on your back of giving back, like you said, you're giving back to the community of where you come from. From cats, like you're going, let me hear it, let me see it, let me fix your pockets. Not long ago, I did an album called The Pimp Tape, and I really was like at a point where I was like, I really don't even feel like rapping. Like I'm doing shows, everything is cool. The legacy is is there, and Mr. Fab was, um, Mr. F A B was like, just chastising me about doing new music. And I'm, ah. like, I'm like, bro, I really don't feel like it. I'm cool on that shit. So he went in the studio and <laughs> literally <laughs> we go in the studio and he's just freestyling for days and days and days and he's like, you know, just doing all these fucking freestyles. And literally he was just like motivating me to get back in the groove. This is probably like 2014, 15. And he was just going there and freestyle to a beat and I was just taking it and like Rewrite and use certain parts of it, but uh, I was I was really like like at the end of my line, and and since then I've been back in the studio and probably wrote another 200 songs and wow. recorded a bunch of shit. So he he jump started uh, the, the, the motivation on that. Way to go, fat! Look at him. Yeah, shout on, out to on, on me rapping into my 50s. <laughs>
Which wow. is fucking crazy. We're going to break real quick and talk about that, wrapping into the 50s. How hard does it take to say fit to even do that? We're going to talk about it when we come back. <laughs> it's Cannabis Talk 101. Give it up, baby. Bitch, two shorts in the building. Let's go. It. It's Cannabis Talk 101. Keep it locked. We'll be right back with Cannabis Talk 101. Welcome back to Cannabis Talk 101. Advanced Nutrients, you guys, they have a complete growing system for cannabis that optimizes all phases and cycles to bring your crops to their true genetic potential. Discover more at advancednutrients.com. Cannabis Talk 101 with Blue and Joe Grande, the world's number one source for everything cannabis. Dude, it is so dope to finally sit down with Too Short. I mean, thinking that you're in your 50s and you're still coming up with new shit as we just go to break and hearing your stories. We can go for days because I could just mention some new shit that, like I said, I... I go back to even seeing your early shows and being at your fucking, you ready for this? Like the fairgrounds, mm-hmm. San Jose fairgrounds, early, or, and I'm talking before your sign shows. Did a lot there. When, you ready for this? When Grape Street would show up and mob the front. <laughs> you <laughs> said at the San Jose State event. The, 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 the lowrider car shows and yeah. shit. Oh man, I remember going to all those was, early on, right? So I've seen this support, so it's fun for me to be in, the, in a position to be like, dude, I feel like I watched it because we're around the same age, mm-hmm. and, and I witnessed that, and now I'm in my 50s, you're in your 50s. How hard is it, dog, to keep going? Because you are literally performing on stages you're, you're in athlete. different cities and different an states and different countries. Well, you know, um, it's got to be, uh, the passion has to be there, so uh, I still have fun with it. I think that a lot of artists who started out when I started out, they kind of grew out of it or, you know, kind of, you know, it got separated from it some kind of way. And once you separate, it's hard to come back. Like, you know, you sit down for a few years and say, oh, I'm jump back in it. It's a, it's a stamina kind of thing, man. It's a whole, like, like, like boxing or, You're an athlete. or, or playing sports. Yeah, you can't, you can't just jump back in with the professionals if you've been on the sidelines for years. So I stayed active the entire time. Me and E-40 talk a lot. And this is one of our conversations we talk about. It's just, it's just kind of like always being in shape. Stay ready. Hip hop shape, you know? Hip hop shape. And you, what that means is you put me in front of a beat in a studio, I'm going to do something really good. You put me in front of a crowd with a microphone, I'm going to do something really good. Like, it's not, I don't have to let, it's no yeah. guesswork to it. It's automatic. I'm going to rock the fucking crowd. It's been that way since I was 14. And it's that way when I'm 54. And it's, it's going to be that way when I'm 60. It don't matter. So um, I just think that uh, it's the passion. To make to, that, that motivates you to do what you do, yeah. and that passion happens to be the reaction from rocking the crowd, the satisfaction from listening to a song we just recorded, uh, you know, looking at the wire transfer go through the bank account, or or the backstage counting out money, whatever the fuck it may be, it's motivational. And I, at the times where I thought that I should step back and step away from it. It was always somebody there going, man, why? Why would you do that? Have you ever seen a jazz musician walk away? Have you, do you see fucking um, uh, blues singers? Did B.B. King walk the fuck away? So why, why, why should a hip hop artist walk away? So a lot of the things I'm doing now, I don't have to do, but it's good for hip hop. It's good to say uh, when somebody starts this um, ageism conversation about hip hop, it's like, oh, yo, old ass, blah, blah, blah. But then you, you got a real reference to go, well, damn, Jay-Z was fucking 50. Snoop Dogg was 50. E-40 and Two Shirts was motherfucking 55. Like, motherfuckers was still getting money. So no matter where you at as a young hip-hop artist, you don't have to be told that you're in this box and these are the rules. There's no limitation. Yeah, hip-hop is not in a box. Hip-hop is hip-hop. It sells itself. So us old heads can't tell the young heads what to do. Your opinions don't really mean shit, and vice versa. And it, it, you know, ageism in hip hop is something that it's probably always going to be there, 
but I'm part of the reference when you say, well, I know an old ass rapper that was getting money for years. So yeah. I just want to I just want to extend that as far as possible so that the box that we think hip hop is just gets bigger. That's it all. never it doesn't have to die basically. Well, and not only does it not well, die, but you're setting even the box to be so much bigger. It's never a box realistically because exactly. it's not a box no more. What you're saying is you're fucking tearing down whatever you think is. But necessary. a lot of hip hop fans have totally. their, their little box mm -hmm. of this is what hip hop is. I and see you're not the in the box. You're fake. You yeah. He, it's <laughs> who is the face of of uh, uh, in the crowd at a too short concert? You know what I'm saying? Like when you think of like, you know what I mean? Who 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 shows up to two short concerts? Well, it's, it it varies. <laughs> it, it varies when you go to different regions, but it's it's usually the person who um, it's the person who was there. There's always the intro person, the person who turned you on to it that was always there, and then uh, it's all these trickle down fans of, you know, I have a lot of fans who weren't there. When also, was, some young random shit. We're like, how they, you know my shit? They weren't there, but they're the kids who heard it in the house. It's like me at a Motown concert. Right. I wasn't there, but I heard the music at home so much, I know Motown. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they know Too Short. They know E-40. They know it because they were in the car seat pissing in their diaper, and in the speakers was Too Short E-40. You know what I mean? Right. And you, you grew up on that shit. So I, have a, I do a lot of shows with young crowds, and, you know... Well, what I meant is 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 not the age group. I was thinking more like Hispanics, you know, because I feel like the well, I do Hispanic a lot of shows that are just like Mexicans only. Yeah, I, do. Like, I, I feel like, like I feel like there's just a huge Hispanic, you know, culture that just grew up and listens to your your music. I can quit doing all shows and say I'm only doing shows Mexicans, and I'll be you'll be fine. You'll be fine for the rest. Yeah, of yeah, I'll be good. Yeah, and I, I that's, really that's believe the that. love. Yeah, there's I, so I, much no, love in the Hispanic I culture. I mean, I dog, I, I grew I up. You. I mean, I I I I'm from Los Angeles. I grew up in a very Hispanic town. We all bump too short. We all it, I like. We, you could put a, a a whole lineup together and be like, "Short's gonna be there. Let's go!" And like it was that <laughs> big for the Hispanic market. And even when we're cruising Woody or Boulevard or cruising all these different, like that was the shit. It was just like he didn't cross over as a Bay Area hip hop artist, right? I think oh, short, was, like you got I've, that. I've pass. had I've had other artists. I'm not gonna name names because it's it's. Not not even relevant but <clears throat> i've had really major artists come to me and go how did you get the support of the mexicans like that? yeah and like what did you do and i'm like i'm like bro i just think it started with the music you know <coughs> like i made music that sounded good in lowriders if you had to yeah. do shit Doom. like songs like Doom. um Doom. The, songs like the ghetto the that's like ghetto. a lowrider that's oh, a lowrider yeah. song I, ha yeah. I had to get a system in my <laughs> shit and i tested it with your shit you know what i mean and that's like yours was a tester like lowrider magazine would do these car shows about. and you would have like this the competition for the best bass and be, half the be. motherfuckers in the competition would be playing a two short song. every time every, you know every I mean? time bro and it'd be and like what the fuck and no matter what just pick culture. a different one he's lowrider culture so that's it wasn't a thing where i tried to pander my music to you didn't Mexican. do an order. No, yeah. You didn't even do it. Just adopted it. It just they, happened to just fit. It just fit. They adopted it. You know what I mean? It was just right music. Well, it was the part right of the culture because even where you were at in Oakland, there was a lot of Mexicans by you, anyways, yeah. right? Hey, I mean, right next door. I'm from California. Everywhere exactly. I've been in my in my whole life, every school I went to was half Mexican, half black. Every yeah. school. Yeah. So yeah. everywhere there, so it's the same concept yeah. when we see... I tell some Mexicans, I'm like, I'm more Mexican than you. Yeah, <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> like, you're not as Mexican as you. are like, yeah. I grew up on Fideo. <laughs> <laughs> Your mama ain't even making you that shit. Uh, hey, as you say that, Short, tell me about that upcoming, because I don't even know the story of you, young, young 40, or not young, you, you, I heard you meet E40 as a young kid on the streets like that, but where's Short, because I grew up in San Jose, right, east side, I used to go to Oakland, I used to go to eat... Oh, uh, East 14th when it was East mm -hmm. 14th to go to Flint's just on some neighborhood neighborhood yeah, shit. East 14th at Flint's. You okay. feel me? You know what I mean? I'm I'm that okay. neighborhood cat. So I I know the neighborhoods out there. I used to go there. And so therefore, where were you at? What was it like a, for you there? I have a cheat code. I was born on Sunset Boulevard, and I grew up in um as a little kid elementary school. I grew up in South Central LA, like Manchester and Normandy. Oh wow! I and I moved to Oakland, ninth grade. Ninth, okay. And basically, I started rapping in Oakland. Um, you know, I was I was like a kid when I got there. And the shit that made me a man was all that town shit, all that East Oakland shit. And basically, my cheat code was that when I really started making records, I had a, a like a, a network already in SoCal of like 
family, relatives, people that I went to Support. school with. Oh, and since, since ninth grade. Yeah, those are friends. So basically, you would have to go break another market. You know, I started off as a Bay Area local artist. You would have to go to L.A. and, and figure out how to break it. But I had like a support system already. And it kind of just the first stuff I did, it just took. It was just like. I, was like, I played soccer with him as a kid. Like I played football but, with him. But That's I think that boy. in my DNA, I kind of, you know, I spent a lot of years of my life in New Orleans. And if you listen to some Too I Short songs, yeah. I was putting in influences of what I was hearing in New Orleans into my music. And I have songs that they that resonated with them early in my career. And they like, you know, it, it, it made me to where they do this tour called Legends of the South. And it's just uh, mystical. Um, it's, it's usually, you know... Um, Eight ball MJG Bun Master B, P Bun B is on there. Master P does his own thing. He oh, won't go on that. Type he won't even shit. go to that. Um, it'd be like um, Trina and Trick Daddy, okay. and you know, Southern artists that have like uh, multiple songs that they love. This show is amazing. Juvenile's on it a lot, and they book me on those shows. Legends of the South. I'm like, I'm from California. They're like, well, don't matter. And imagine. I think you're ready you're for this. And, and, and it goes back to just who you are as a cat because as a cat, when you say in your raps, if I'm not mistaken, shout out to New Orleans and you do your shit like where you're like giving everybody homage for their styles and giving it to them. And you were the first one in my book to do that type of shit. We're like, how do the motherfuckers not love you for that? You know what I mean? Like you're giving so, them the props. So, you know, the cheat code was just actually being in tune. Like I said, I'm a music guy. I was in the elementary school band. I was in the high school marching band. I know music, so. Um, What'd you do in the band? I was a drummer, no doubt. That's, yeah. that's Being okay. a drummer, the first time I heard anybody rap, the first thing I thought was, I could do that, because yeah. it was just patterns, you know? And I did it. I was rapping. I started rapping in 1980. Do you remember where you heard it from? Was it Kevy Kev at Stanford Radio? Uh, the first rap I heard was in 1979. <laughs> When, you know, they drop Rapper's Delight. But huh. if you listen to the music, I'm, I was into a lot of funk music, like Parliament Funkadelic, you know, Ohio Players Cameo, you know, the oh, funk. Yeah. And if you listen to the funk, there was always somebody, you know, saying something, talking something to the rhythm a little bit, like, especially like in Parliament songs. And they didn't call it hip-hop or rap, but the rhythm was there, you know? And, and when it officially got its name... I heard rap for the first time in 1979, where they called it hip hop. I was doing it by 1980, so you got a lot of artists who consider themselves to be, you know, pioneers from like New York. And I'm like, shit, I've been rapping just as long as you. I've been famous just as long as you. I got more hit records than you. Like I'm like you, you, you say that you're more authentic than me, than me, but it's not true. The Hip Hop Hall of Fame, right? What, what about it? You in it? Well, I got the 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 um, VH1 version of it when it was the VH1 Hip Hop Honors. I, they they featured me on there, but I don't even know what the Hip Hop Hall of Fame is. I'm like I'm like Run DMC. I'm like we want the, yeah, yeah, we want the like, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm a fucking and, rock star. And, and, and you know what's yeah, funny? Yeah, it's, right. it's funny you say that, right? Because I was at Run DMC's induction, and so was Jay Z. It's funny I was yeah. there with him for that. So it's as you say that I agree with you. You are one of the yeah. motherfuckers that deserve to be on the motherfucking Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as well. I fully agree with you, dog. It's so funny you say that, Short, because those are facts of looking at the 80, 79 hip-hop apparently comes out. This motherfucker got a track in the 80s, from the 80s. Well, what yeah. more do you need? Did you ever cross over with like, you know, some of those big bands and stuff and do, do records? I, I made a song with a Parliament Funkadelic. Nice. I made a few songs with them, but... um. That, the hit record I had getting it. That's me and George Clinton and his crew. Oh, no Straight shit. Up, so. I feel like I can compare you in my head, which I've done several times talking to people when I do the rap history. You know, and I, you we all play that game or whoever doesn't, then you're not that hip hop guy, but we do it all the time. And I always go, man, in my opinion, Short is one of those, like an Elvis Presley. Well, yeah. you know, we, <laughs> you know it really is. If you want to do numbers, the numbers are real. I had. Um, Six platinum albums. One of those was a double platinum. And I have four gold albums. And in the world of hip hop and fucking music in general, <laughs> the artists that you know and love your for life don't have numbers like that. So when you get into hip hop and you start saying, how many rappers have five platinum albums? Yeah. It's a really small list. Wow. And then you get up to the, the six where I'm at. 
gets even smaller. And when you get to seven, eight, you talking about you got two hands of you know the and let alone I, still can, performing. Can we borrow one of them and put them up in the in the studio? Can we get black? <laughs> can we borrow one of them? Plaques. <laughs> you might be mad at me, but I I have plaques that like. Man, them motherfuckers is laying around in the closet. Come so on, man. There's too many of them. Let's put them up. Right? Let's put some up. Well, man. not only that, we've been to your your little spot. They're your everywhere. Spot. They're everywhere. Spot, everywhere. There is cannabis talk. One We're gonna come yeah. back. We got the man here, short dog. We're gonna hear about his cannabis brands. He's got his own little whoopy whoopy smoking. Cause you want to smoke with shorts token? We got it right here, folks. Come back. It's cannabis talk 101. We'll be right back after this. We'll be right back with cannabis talk 101. Ready for the biggest concert of the year. It's the Burning Trees Festival, August 27th in Adelanto, California. Performing live on stage, it's the boss man himself, Rick Ross. One who live by the code, put this music to the side, get it in on Ludacris. Buster Rhymes. Big Draco, aka Soldier Boy. Too short. Havoc from the infamous Mob Deep. X to the Z exhibit. And corrupt young Gotti. All live on stage August 27th at the Adelanto Plaza and Event Center. Plus, we have the World Series of Cannabis presented by CanX's iHeartRadio's Cannabis Talk 101, Game Day, Green Holdings Group, The Blacklist, and Weed Maps. For tickets, go to CanX's.com. That's C A N N E X. Are you ready for the biggest concert of the year? It's the Burning Trees Festival, <laughs> August 27th in Adelanto, California. Performing live on stage, it's the boss man himself, Rick, Rick Ross, Ross, Ludacris, Buster somebody Ross, was, somebody Big Draco, a.k.a. Soulja <laughs> Boy. A- <laughs> dog, I'm for real. Somebody did a bunch of commercials. <laughs> hey, dog, you know how you are? Just give Rick me a mic and say, let's go. I'm the same way. Oh, Joe, here man. you go. And I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to go. Don't, don't tell me when we're on, but used, I'll go on. Used to record those sweeps, too. You all day? Every day. <laughs> Come on, you know how we do. Bottom line, folks, Big Draco, aka Soldier Boy, the man right there you just heard, gonna be performing live on stage. <laughs> Too, Too short. short. Havoc from the pull infamous Mob Deep X to the Z up. exhibit and corrupt Young Gotti. All live on stage August 27th at the Adelanto Plaza and Event Center. Plus, we got so many of us that are helping throw this all you guys. Can X's iHeartRadio's Cannabis Talk 101 Game Day, Green Holdings Group. Dues, the blacklist, and weed maps. For tickets, go to canexus.com. Yeah, man. Short, we were talking about your cannabis mm-hmm. as brand as you mm-hmm. as we went to break, and it's funny because Doug, when I tell you I smoked many blunts to your shit. I mean, <laughs> like many, many, many. I feel like I learned I was, I was, how to roll listening to you, right? Like I was literally. banging out the window with this shit. That <laughs> being said, like you come out with a brand, and I first knew of your brand when I went to Freddie Sage's, the Fox Firm's fucking release thing, right? <laughs> yeah. X amount of years ago. And I see you on that, and I go, wow, he's having an activation and doing something up there. Mm-hmm. And I seen it, and I was like, cool. That's the first I've heard of it about three, four years ago. So what is it, and what are you doing with the brand now? Where, where can people find it? So I really resisted um, joining the industry in the early days, you know, the early 2000s. And then later, like around the 2010s, it was, you know, it was people just around me going, hey, let's do it, let's do it. And I'm like, I do this, I don't do that. And I just, out of respect for the industry, as I entered into, you know, trying to get some money and just being a part of it, I kind of just took my time and learned what was going on. And I know there's a lot of, <clears throat> in these last five or so years, been a lot of changes, uh, legal legal changes. And I've just been kind of watching how it's going. So I did a little dabbling in some uh, pre-rolls. I dabbled a little bit in some uh, some flour. And, you know, I feel like um, where I want to end up in this industry is in multiple states as a brand. So... I'm really just doing a lot of homework, a lot of legwork to get to that phase. And, you know, I, I have a brand called the Too Short Brand. Uh, we're launching another brand called The Fence. And I'm just like, I'm not really trying to come in and go, I'm top dog. I'm actually just trying to do or- like I did in music, put out a good product, work my way up in the game. Let's get some money. Let's do it. So I'm going to be around. We're not going anywhere. So it, it, Organic. We're making moves to where... It's not going to be where you can just pinpoint me. Like I said, I'm not in the box. You can just be like, oh, that's too short right over there. You'll see when I bust these moves that 
We just want to be in it. So we're gonna be in it. We're gonna be. You're gonna see that name around. Uh, I'm going everywhere from the fucking seed to the motherfucking 18 wheeler dropping off the motherfucking packaging. We in it all love the way. It. Love it, man. Too short coming hard in the cannabis game, like you do in the rap game, though. I mean, <clears> you've done it all. I feel like that's why. I mean, that's why I'm here, man. I'm really just. You know, affiliating myself with the best of the best and just being around it, man. You know, Snoop Dogg's my guy, and, you know, Snoop is a Mr. Cannabis, so yeah. I'm just around it, man. But, and I, and it, I, it, but so are you in my book, dog. Don't get it twisted. Like, yeah. when, when motherfuckers hear too short, it don't, like, mean I went to church or I'm just going to say, bitch. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like, come on. You know what it means. There's a difference, though. Like, right before we started filming, I, I popped this open, and I hit my little joint like about three or four times and I dropped it back in here. This shit might last me like most of the day. Yeah. You hanging around those other guys, man, they running through like... Some cats just smoke differently. I'm I'm like that too though, short. Like I I used to smoke every day, you know, when I was young and then I got to a point where, you know, I'll hit one or two hits and I'm good. Like I don't want to be, you know, blitzed and shit. I just like a little... catch a buzz. I'm cool. I smoke it. It it flows. I I, I get a consistent, uh, you know flow all day but i don't smoke back to back to back to back to back to back roll yeah. another roll another yeah, just roll, roll another. just roll and as your brand comes out are you hands-on with touching it looking at it making sure it's that quality that you want and you like yeah well you know there's there's, there's different parts to it because um you talk about the quality and all that but i'm also really 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 into the uh mid-grade part of uh, the cannabis industry uh, it's important to me that my fans and music can are, afford it. Yeah, they come from all walks of life. I'm not just trying to cater to the guy who can afford an eighty-five dollar oh, no. fucking eight. Yeah, yeah. I, I, want, I want the Smart. guy who's really going in the store looking like I got eighty-five dollars on me. What am I gonna get? <laughs> <laughs> hey, and I gotta I, go I love you for people. that though, because that's that's the real. I mean, you're giving back to your people, making sure that people can actually afford what you got, and and I think that's super important. And, and right now, as much as the industry is changing and evolving, it's smart for you to sit back and watch what's happening and kind of see how it's growing because. You know, there, there's been so many changes. Motherfucker mm-hmm. comes out with the brand one day. They got to rechange all their packaging. They don't understand that the, this has been changed, that's been changed, and then there's legal things that are happening. Cities are taking it. Some cities aren't. Some cities are working. States are working with it. So, you know, it's it's very intelligent. And I, I, one of the things I really like about you, in, as I'm getting to know you, you know, uh, short, is that, you know, the the, the man we listen to is not the businessman that we sit next to. You know, when, when when I sit with you and talk to you now, right this second, I'm gonna realize that, you know, you're not just some rapper that's just, you know, in his head that's talented, that has lyrics. You actually are a business conglomerate. Like you have the ability to do anything that you want and, and I appreciate that about you. Yeah, man. you know, um we underestimate a lot of our hip hop artists and we kind of uh relate to them. Stereotype them in, in, in the music they make and you don't you, you don't understand that it's always been the music business. Yeah. And there's, there's not one word. There's two words. Yeah. So <laughs> a lot of guys who jump in here and make all this music and they don't do the other word, they don't really get to stick around. Yeah. And a lot of guys who are really good at the business, they don't have to be the best musician. And the shit is just bigger because they're, they're hustling, man. And so, you know, I really respect artists who could get in this game, hang around for a long time. I mean, same thing with the cannabis, you know what I'm saying? You get in there, you hang around. I've been watching cannabis for the last 10 years. It's a revolving door of yeah. people who consider themselves in it, and then you're right back Boop. out of it. Boom. You Gone. Know? So, Bing. <laughs> same thing with the music, man. It's like, um, you know, you got to you gotta do both parts, man. You got to be, you, you look at your, your favorite rappers that have been around for years, man. Those are all businessmen. Yeah. Right? I don't care how ignorant you think somebody's image is. You couldn't get to that point without being some kind of smart businessman. For sure. So a lot of times when I say you underestimate them, guys will get on like an interview like this and kind of talk a certain way on purpose. You're like, you know, I'm doing nothing, man. Ah. And you're like, that stupid motherfucker he can't even open his mouth. And you're like, don't even know. As soon as he's finished the interview, he's like, uh, is my driver here? Can we go? Yeah, 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 <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. fucking imaging, man. And it's like, you got to sell, you got to be able to sell the entertainment and then stay on top of your shit. And it's not easy to do. That's part of the reason why a lot of recording artists don't stick around for a long time. Because juggling those two is really hard to do. It's hard to be from the hood and 
you finally get your foot in the door and you make it big, you get a lot of money. Now you got a house with a pool. You got three girlfriends fighting over you. You got the best video games and the best weed. And they come up and go, hey, we need another album. And you like, you got feet up on the couch, a dick in her mouth. You're <laughs> you know good. Yeah, you're, you're uncomfortable. Like, what am I going to rap about? Yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's lost. So you wonder what happens to a lot of artists. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough it's a tough situation to to be able to step back up to the table, make another platinum. Album. What about artists do right now? Do another platinum. Do right? another platinum. That shit's hard. And yeah. I, I would think that artists right now. What do you feel about them? Like the music that's being played. I mean, I feel the same way, man. I think that I I really envy the artists now because of the multiple platforms that they get to make money through. Yeah. Like they have a lot of like. You're like one you hit, guys get to make so much money so much faster than I had as you. Yeah, but I but my generation made more money than the one before us. So it's just like exactly. It's like I admire the platforms, the, mul the multiple platforms, and how you could just make so much money off just being popular. You don't even necessarily yeah, need you know, a hit a, record. You, you just need to be popular. popular. You fall on and, your ass and become a star. <laughs> you know and, what I mean? Literally. Yeah, and I think that, um, you know, when you talk about sports and different eras and who would have been what in different eras, it's the same thing with music. I think that you just got to adapt to your era and maximize that shit. So it's not easy now. It wasn't easy back then to become the cream of the crop of what one other million people are trying to do at the same time. And you end up up here. You can't sit there and discount that kind of artist, that kind of person and say, this shit is whack. Like how the fuck you so whack, but you got up here, you're making all this money. Your shit's all in rotation. All the fans, all the kids, they love you. Something is not whack. Yeah. They are liking it. So I respect that same thing I've been saying where you step up to the plate, you win. They give you another opportunity. Your foot's in the door now. What you going to do? I'm going to win again. And what you going to do after that? I'm going to win again. again. And I'm like, that's who I respect. I'm not really saying who makes the best record, who got the best I'm flow, who it. does the best show. Who's going to stick around long enough to employ other people, to bring other people in to the game, to look back on your legacy and go, man, look at all these people doing good because I did good and I helped all them. That's what this shit is about. Man, but, hey dog, you preach. That, that, that's, Man, that's what I, just, that's, that's what we doing. Hey, dog, I, that's what good I, is. That's good. Ty, let's look around. This is what we doing. That's yeah, right. yeah, no, that's what we doing. I, the trickle I, down, man. It's the motherfucker. You feel me? This is what we doing. It, we start off with interns from my heart. With as a guy, colleges. there's a guy here right now that is going to get so much experience that his entire life he's going to think back and tell everybody that moment. Where I started, you know what I'm saying? If I didn't yeah. have that opportunity, I would have never got here. And that shit is that shit is everything. Yeah, man. And it's funny that we've been through that as we get to look at it and help people. Because like you say that, and I believe this is where you're coming from. That, to me, is the best feeling that we get as, as we being here, which I'm sure you're describing that you get, yeah. which is that give back of seeing somebody else, like you mentioned, organically, not purposely, of allowing somebody to write something for you from the hood, from every album, because that give back was part of the DNA from Jump. Yeah, and, I, and also comes back on you as blessings too. So yeah, hundredfold. So shout out to Chef Jay for making us some food right now. We're gonna jump into the high oh, five, but real like quick that? before we go into that high five, do you like that food? The food was good, man. Some chicken and waffles, potato salad. It was a salad on there, and he hit me with the apple pie with the, <laughs> the with bourbon the ice cream with the bourbon. I'm like. <laughs> Like, okay. It was and then, decent, then you try man. to take so, away my 24 yeah. year chip on that one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did hey, take he it away. He tried to take my chip away on that uh, like, All I need now is be, a good smoke. Before we do the Bernie, I mean, the, the, the high five, man, real quick, what do you think about the lineup for Bernie Trees, man? I mean, you know, Buster Rhymes, Rick Ross, Luda, yourself, Soldier, Exhibit. What do you think about that, man? Uh, everybody you're naming is guaranteeing the fans in the audience that they're going to see multiple good shows. Yeah. Like, you naming people who really do, they're seasoned they performers. They do really good shows. So, yeah. you got a lot in store. I know what I do, and the the names you just named, I know what they do, too. So Yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be a good day. It's always fun when you think about where, that. Not where, only is it going to be a good day, give where, me shoes. Wear your comfortable shoes. Yeah, it's going to be a long day. <laughs> don't, nope. don't, don't wear your hoe shoes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no wooden chanclas out there in the desert, folks. Bring some you, fucking... If you wear them hoe shoes, you're going to be carrying them around in two fingers. Yeah, you will. I call them complainers. <laughs> <laughs> don't wear your motherfucking complainers, folks. <laughs> That's what I've always called them. From yeah, John. man. What do you got on your complainers? It's now time for the high five with two <laughs> short, you guys. Five simple questions, brother. Just your simple answer. How old okay. were you the first time you smoked cannabis, and where'd you get it from? Uh, I smoked 
some weed with my older brother. I was 13. Where were you guys at? Uh, we were just walking from school somewhere or something, and he was doing it. And I was, you know, I wasn't being offered it. I was like, let me hit it. I remember the first time I did it. I said, let me hit it. He's like, you don't, you don't want this. I'm like, let me hit it. And I hit it one time, and I started acting like I was drunk. And he's like, you faking. I was, <laughs> I was like, nah, man. I was fake. Yeah. But then when I was 14, you know, I'm not really proud of this, but when I was 14, I became like a, you know, really regular smoker. I got me a, um, a pack of rolling papers and, and a bottle of parsley. Right. And I just rolled it, rolled it. Just, just practice? It. Yeah. And Shut I was up. Like, practice yeah. makes perfect. No, and one day I figured out how to do it, and I was like, I, was a ve- I had an older brother. Who um, I used to sneak and like smoke weed out the window in my room, and then uh, my mother was like, "I smell weed." And I'm like, "It's not me." Ah! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my brother was ten years older. That's yeah. how I smoked. That's must, six. must be him. Yeah, the sixteen year old. Question number two of the high five: What is your favorite way to use or smoke cannabis? Right now, I'm uh, I'm strictly flower. You know, I smoke these um these little joints. Not, they're not they're like little joints, but I pack them with a lot of weed. Yeah. Not too much, and um, I could, um, I could like, you can like take as much weed as you want, and I take as much weed as I want, and you roll a blunt, and I roll a joint, and I bet you I can fucking roll a joint so fucking fat, like you your blunt wouldn't fuck with it. That but I, <laughs> that parsley training, the, yeah. the um, edibles, if it's the, if it's strong enough, edibles to me are like a, a home thing, where yeah, you know house. on the chill might be like a little sip of some liquor, maybe some red wine and an edible, and I'm, like, kicking it at the house. But outside of that, I'm not, I'm really not into wax. Yeah, that shit fucks me up. Not into wax. I'm not into, um, yeah. into, No uh, dabbing and shit, no dabs. I don't, I don't even like the pins, the vape pins or whatever, because they, they hit my chest too chest? hard. Oh, really? That's the only I, I like the pins. I mean, yeah, but if that's what you used to. Exactly. Because, I, you know, I've been, I've been around, and, um, somewhere where, um, where they like weed is just like not cool at some event. Bring that little yeah, pen. Yeah, pen help you out. <laughs> help you out. Real quick. player right there, nonchalant. I got I my be, nicotine right I'd here. I'd be at a funeral with my pen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm to the name of Jesus. Question number three of the high five with two short right here. Craziest place you ever used cannabis besides the funeral that you're just talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I had techniques on how to smoke. I have like a, a foolproof plan on how to smoke weed somewhere where it's just not allowed and what i do is um I, I it has to fit in my hand so it's like like my little joint i light it up as soon as i light it i cuff it in my hand and i start walking so every time i hit it and blow it out it's behind me and i just keep moving and i work the whole room and then i put it back up yeah and, then, <laughs> and i look back and all the security Who's smoking? Yeah, yeah, everybody's doing the who's smoking. And, that was, and I just, like, keep it to myself. Yeah, just walk, boom, hit it, go. So that's just the game right there. That's a, I can smoke anywhere. Anywhere like and that. everywhere he's been doing that for ne- years. Never been caught. Question number four, what is your go-to munchie after you get high? I've been smoking so long, and I've never, I don't relate the munchies with weed. It just, no, it just, just doesn't no. happen. Well, if you were at home and you are on a good edible and you got a good little red liquor on you, would if you I, make if something I did good? Get, if I did get the munchies, which I can't, but I'm saying if I did... It, it would probably be something like a root beer float. Nice. That was that was Pops his favorite. That was my I used to go favorite. when I was at three fifty. That's where I knew I was bad. <laughs> I have. I woke up in the middle of the night one time. And I went downstairs and made me a root beer float, and I went to myself. That's how fat you've gotten, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll never forget a root beer float. It was that? That's how fat you are, huh? Middle of the <laughs> what time is it? Three in the morning. I think I need a root beer float. Yeah. Fucking munchies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Question number five of the high five short dog. This is a good one because you can go as deep and vulnerable as you want, brother. But if you vulnerable. can smoke cannibal, you ready for this one? <laughs> Wait before you. That's a little sensitive, right <laughs> as there. Deep right? And vulnerable. vulnerable. Question with a vulnerable answer. You ready? <laughs> and deep you ready? and vulnerable. You ready? If you could smoke cannabis with anyone, dead, dead or, or alive, alive, who would it be and why? I smoked with the best man. Damn. That's why I That's can go right. deep. Who would I want to smoke with? You know? Uh, let's think. I probably would say like a Jimi Hendrix. Wow. Hendrix. You know, you know. Yeah. Just some of the most iconic fucking. But I've smoked so many times with Snoop Dogg. I smoked so much with George Clinton. Like I I've hung out with my heroes, man. But Jimi Hendrix seemed like, you know, he's a musician. He's kind of an eccentric kind of guy. 
you know, he he had the ladies and shit. He might be a good homie to hang out with. Who is oh, your, he smoke. was he was one of those players. Yeah. Who, who is your music hero, man? Like you know what I'm saying? If you just George Clinton, hands down. Yeah, no shit. There's no no. He's comparison. he's performing tonight, right? Or, that was last, last night. Last night. Oh, yeah, that was last night. Okay. He's an icon. I got a chance to meet him once, uh, a few times, actually, in the Bay Area. He's just one of those DJ writers. Dude, he's one still those... cracking. Like, I mean, you yeah, know. Just, just... there with the tail on the head. Not <laughs> cracking like crack. He's drug free now. No, no, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> Why you got to bring that old <laughs> shit up? No, he's drug free. He's no, I meant he's, he's, he's 80 still years popping. old, man. He's, he's still 80 popping. Years old, still doing shows. Yeah, still popping. He's like, like meant, Grateful man. Dead status. Um, um, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, he just goes there iconic. And he's 80. He'll do a two hour show, three hour show. Anywhere in the world, the man is amazing. Yeah, man. He What's the is. longest show you've done? Because you could probably still start Freaky Tales right now, and it'll be done on a Thursday I, next I week. I keep it like around an hour just to keep the audience engaged. But I, I do these shows a few times a year with a live band. And every time we bring out the live band, we go two, two and a half hours. We just go. Wow. I watched something online that you did at your campus the other day. That shit was dope. As the, fuck. Um, the tiny, tiny desk. Whatever it was, somebody had it online here and they were like, look, I'll go, that's a spot over there. Oh, yeah, that shit was hard. But anything we want to bring up before we let you go, I know you got to get out of here. Uh, we just bring back the Mount Westmore. Don't forget Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, E40, and Too Short. Just keep your eyes and ears open. That's that real ish. For real though. Man, too short. Thank you for joining us. It's Cannabis Talk 101. And remember this if no one else loves you, we do. Thank you for listening to Cannabis Talk 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.